Well, hey there, you're on the internet, I have some free time, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie noob nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Now, today's ink, um, I had, and somebody requested that I review it, however, it was a good bit of time ago, so I'm sorry, but I forgot your name, because I'm an awful person. Yes. Today's ink is from the brand Roja Umkinga, uh, and this one is Sepia Brown. Uh, I actually keep forgetting it. I keep having to remind myself. But sepia actually comes from, like the color and the name and all that, it comes from squid ink. So, you know, a lot of times when we think of like sepia, sepia film, whatever. Uh, so that's what I've come to associate with sepia is, you know, sort of like that golden, hazy kind of film color. This definitely evokes uh, true sepia. Especially in the vial. Uh, as a kid, I went to the marine biology camp. And I mean, like, as a kid kid. And we had pet squids for a week. And of course, the teacher was nuts. And so one of the things we did at the end of the week-long camp was we had a barbecue and she made calamari out of our pet squids. And I haven't eaten seafood since. Poor Squishy. Anyways, um... No, that wasn't his name. It was... Sucker. So I'd be like, ah, sucker. Anyway, oh god, personal stories. Never mind. This definitely looks like squid ink. But yeah, fascinating brown color. Actually quite enjoyed it, so let's get into it. Two pens I used for these. This is a uh Nemocine Nemocine uh, It's a singularity. And it is a 0.6 stub. And as you might be able to tell, you cannot see through those tines. Those are very tightly pressed together. So this is one of my drier flowing pens. Even though I don't like my pens like that, I've kept this pen and three identical others like that for these tests specifically. So that's a little stub. And here we have a Jinhao X450. I love my X450s because they tend to be pretty broad and pretty wet. This one definitely is. There's a little contrast of experience there. Now, this is a fairly unique color. So uh, bear with me, out of about, I think it's like 658 swatches, these are the four closest. As you can probably tell, there's like undertones of like gold in places, there's definitely like hints of gray, lots of shading, but yeah. So here's that. Next I have Toucan Umber, which is a bit more of a straight brown, much less gray, but it does sort of have that dustiness to it. Uh, Noodler's Whaleman Sepia which is definitely trying to evoke that squid ink thing from what I can tell. However, this was so gloopy when I was trying to put it on this card. And I don't know if you'll be able to see, see the weird texture stuff going on in there. I am afraid to put it in a pen. Not just because of all of the horror stories I've heard, but thematically I thought those were rather well suited. Uh, next up is KWZ's Iron Gall Red which is not very red, it's very brown and does have that grayness to it, however it's missing sort of the gold and the little hints of green. And lastly is Sailor's Gentle Doyu. No, wait, the U at the end is meant to, that you're supposed to soften the vowel in front of it, right? So it's Doyu something? God, I'm so horrible at anything not Italian and even that is just pathetic. Uh, yeah, it's much darker, obviously. This is almost like a ebony black. But uh, it does it, something about it. Like, I don't know. But anyway, so there are your comparisons. Now, let's get to chromatography because this is fascinating. Bear with me. All right, so here we go. Now, the one on the right with this little D is the one that I let dry. That is not how you're supposed to do it. Now, generally how I do this is I generally just like run a line of ink and then instantly dunk this one in water. And then once this whole thing dries, I then dunk this. That's usually around eight to ten minutes. But can we just agree something fascinating is going on all up in here? Now we can definitely tell where that initial line is. We get sort of like a soft tan, almost like a cardboard color. But then this almost looks like pencil, right? Like I'm not crazy. It almost looks like someone wrote with pencil. But yeah, so that's fascinating. Yes, and then more sort of that soft cardboardy color, and I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but there, this is not purple. This is gray on top of pink. 
They are two distinctly different colors that are just stacked on top of each other, thus deceptively leading the eye to purple. And then, as the camera is showing you, a very bright, vibrant, um, almost Tiffany's blue up at the top. Now again, this only had about 8 to 10 minutes to dry, but we do see a distinct difference. We see that the line got darker, we see more of these pseudo-pencil lines. There is more of a distinct pushing up. Here we see these little streaks, here we really don't. And here we see, uh, it almost looks like coral, but uh, we see more of a separation between the gray and the pink on the camera. So that's fascinating. And even though the camera is making it highlighter color, is not quite that bright, but the color itself underneath the vibrancy is accurate. That is a very bright shade of blue. Chemical tests. Water. Um, got some of it moving, but as you can tell, where it was laid on really thick, that did not want to move, so it is partially water resistant, or so you would be led to believe. Now, this was interesting. The one-third bleach solution, it didn't get rid of it. It just changed the color so that it almost looks like a sickly orange, like the fruit, F-R-O-O-T-E. But anyways, uh, ammonia pen flush, again, kind of got some of it moving, but not all of it, and probably not as well as water, and started to do weird stuff to the paper. Hydrogen peroxide just did weird stuff all over. So, yeah. Paper test. Top down in density. Clear Fontaine, 90 grams per square meter. This is a fascinating color, and this is what I mean by it really evokes true squid ink sepia color, because this is not like a dusty Old West photograph. This is a smoky brown, which I was appreciating sheer, sheerly for the uniqueness and all the fun undertones, but I, I also started to just enjoy the, that weird color. Now, if you see in the smear, this is the 0.6 dove, it took 16 seconds to dry. See how that's actually a light tan? Like a light cardboardy tan? Oh, that was fascinating. Uh, the X450 took 27 seconds. We definitely have shading uh, in that stub in particular just because the X450 was putting down a good bit of ink. But yeah, there's no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no sheen. All good in that regard. Um, it was a bit wet. Uh, maybe 6.5, but that was actually kind of nice, uh, especially with this fairly dry little stub. So, yeah, water test. Uh, didn't dye the page much, and actually a fair bit of it remained. It is not that far off from the very uh, light, because not a lot of ink is being put down with a little stub. So that is very clear, that is very readable, that is recoverable. It's not 100% waterproof, but you, something's better than nothing. Next up is Fabriano Echo Qua. It's an 85 gram per square meter paper. The more I use it, the more I love it. It's great. Now, that little 0.6 stub, dry writing, 15 seconds to dry, fairly run wet and how 27. And once again, where that was smeared, you can see that light tan sort of cardboard box color. You see that there is a wide breadth of shading. And what I think is interesting is we start to see like a really smoky kind of color in the stub, and then we start to see sort of more of a, I don't know, like a denser, almost more of a brown. Uh, in the X450, but again, very well behaved. No bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no shame. All good in that regard. And again, water test is actually fairly decent. Didn't dye the page much. Although here, unlike Claire Fontaine, what we get is actually more of that soft tan cardboard color. And yes, it is lighter, and yes, it is a slightly different color, but it's fairly there, fairly dark. If you had to recover that, you could. And again, uh, these things usually only have about a half hour to dry before I do the water test, so really not bad. Next up is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter. I feel like most people know this stuff in this community, but if not, it's awesome. It's fairly dense ink, it's fairly hydrophobic, which means it takes a while to dry, and it has a mild ceramic coating added in the pressing process. Now here, especially in the, the little scrubby or sorry, the scrubby with a little stub, we can see some of the lines from the quadrilateral paper, which if you're familiar with my videos, I'm a bit of a pet peeve about. However, I really can't mind here, just because 
it's so different from the purple in the background and we do get a good deal of shading that it's very easy to sort of like let those lines fade into the back. Uh, but again, that little stub, uh, that one took 14 seconds to dry. The Fairly Brown Wet Den House took 25. Again, we have the tan where it's been smeared. Wonderful shading. It's really, really nice. And again, no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no sheen. All good in that regard. Now, this kind of surprised me just how much this little stub disappeared. So that did not remain around as much as we had seen before. It did fade. It did get a bit lighter. However, there is a little something there, and the X450 is still fairly clear and fairly there. And like the Fabriano and unlike the Claire Fontaine, again, it remained more of that tan color. Now, next up is Tomoe River paper, which is a cream colored paper, as opposed to the white and like eggshell of the others. Um, however, despite brown generally having, you know, like, you know, brown and then tan is very close and then what's close to tan is kind of a gold color well it's gold a kind of yellow you get what i mean uh this actually did not bring out the hints of yellow in it if anything it really brought out the gray uh it looks really gray on here and i don't say that as a bad thing because it's fascinating how this ink can practically change colors but uh yeah Okay, so the way this paper works, it tends to not bleed, not feather. Well, it does tend to draw out dry times and sheen uh, just by the way, because this paper is so hydrophobic, uh, it doesn't want to absorb water, so the ink kind of sits on top and then eventually just has to air dry and everything just rests on the top of it. Um, but yeah, it, it also allows pens to put down very varying degrees of ink. So in the stub, it is extremely light. As you can see, it's it like very little ink is being put down, and yet when you really apply pressure, like down here with the X450, you can get quite dark. So, yeah, it is fascinating. It almost looks undersaturated in some places with the stub, but that's really just because it it's not making the paper isn't trying to like pull the ink out. I'm not explaining this very well, but anyways, uh, that little stub took 20 seconds to dry. The fairly brown wet and how took 31. Uh, we get less of the tan in the smear. It's more of like a dusty cardboard box kind of color, but yeah. And as I say here, no real bleed, feather, spread, echo, sheen. There is some very near show through here in the scrubby, but that was me really, really laying it on, trying to see if I could get sheen anywhere, because if someone's going to sheen, I think it's going to sheen somewhere, it's going to be here. And here, it gets almost shiny in spots, but that's about it. Camera. Yeah, we don't really get sheen, but yeah, in some places, especially with the X450, you are going to maybe get a bit of echo. But with a small dry writing nib, you probably won't have too much trouble. You might have a bit if you're super sensitive to it. But yeah, uh, water test. This paper is known for letting ink just slide away when you add more water. Uh, it didn't dye the page, and it is very light, especially that stub. That stub is incredibly light even compared to some of the other tests. So, not the easiest thing in the world to recover. The X450 would be maybe a little better, but... Mm. Now, for the next three tests, I only use that little dry 0.6 stub, uh, except to write the name. Now, this is pretty much the world's worst paper ever. It's awful, so I can pretty much guarantee you've got something at least a step up from this. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it's awful. However, because of, there's no shading left at all here, uh, it really, like, you know how you can sometimes, like, oh, well, if you're in an office environment, you know, you can probably get away with using this ink or whatever. I feel like this ink would probably make people pay attention because they'd be like, what the heck is this? Because I don't know if it's, like, a... Have you, ever, have you ever been in, like, a swamp where, like, that's an awkward sentence. But, you know, where there's like this, you know, there's almost like sludge growing on top of wet mud. Yeah. That's kind of the color we're getting, which is totally not a flattering color, but it's just, is it brown? Is it gray? I don't know. Uh, we get like the barest little hints of shading, really not much. It took one and a half seconds to dry. There is definitely some spread. If we look at the 
Tumbleway River versus here. My dog is fighting with something. Uh, there are some feathers, but it's not horribly distracting. But again, this is a very, it's a fairly small stub and it's a stub. So the edge is, you know, leaving a very thin layer of ink in most places. Um, it's extremely dry writing. Honestly, with a paper this absorbent, if the ink were not as slightly wet as it is, this would be a pain in the butt to try and write because the paper would be more thirsty for ink than the feed could allow. So yeah, but let's look at this. Now you can very clearly tell where the water stopped. There's a very distinct line of demarcation. And yet, look at this. Look at how clear this is. This paper tends to absolutely freak the heck out when you add water. But look, there's no feathering. There's no bleeding. It's not just like mm, very clear, very dark, well behaved. You can barely tell where it is in this little cross hatching section. Look, water test. The only thing that even started to come out the back was the dots. And honestly, that could have been before the water test because that's where we get the closest to stuff coming out of the back is the dots. But as you can see, it's all very opaque and it's very dim. It's not dark stuff coming out of the back. That means it rarely reached the other side and it definitely did not come through and it definitely did not dye the page below. Now next up is me notebook paper. Uh, yeah, this comes from a spiral notebook, not the kind uh, you find in like a lab notebook. Mine tends to feather at every opportunity. So it kind of would have, but um, also I just want to show you this. So here's the 20 pound, here's this, and here's the Tumbleway River. So there is barely any spread at all here on the mead, so that's nice. Uh, we retain a little bit of shading. Uh, it took three and a half seconds to dry. There is no bleed. And except in the scrubby, there's almost no echo. Okay, in the X450, but... Now this is pretty standard school children in the US paper. Now yes, this is a small stub and it is dry writing, but this is slightly wet ink, and this paper is physically thinner than 20 pound. This is very thin paper and it is extremely cheap. Honestly, this really wouldn't be a bad combination. This ink with a pen like this, on this paper, especially because look at this, look at this water test. That is every bit as dark as the regular writing above. Now, if you've seen any of my videos, I'm sure you've seen how sometimes mead paper can just lose its mind when you add water. No, look at it, very calm. I mean, no more feathers than you see up above. It works, it's doing well. Definitely a good combo. Now lastly is moleskin, which is terrible and I hate it. But uh, it could be worse. We do see some wooliness and some feathering. But again, I think it's because this is a stub. It's a small stub. It's very dry writing. Um, seven seconds to dry. Despite this obviously being a very absorbent paper, you can see the, the pulp. Yeah, there's a distinct wooliness. Um, there's lots of tiny spots of bleed, because as you can see, like, yeah, a lot of it is blank spade, page, but then when you come in, you see there's lots and lots of very dark, tiny dots. Now, what does that mean? It means it reached all the way through the paper, and even in a couple of places, I wish I had circled them, um, it actually dotted the page below. So, and then, unlike every other piece of paper we've tried, look at this. Look at this water test. This did freak out. It's like half releasing, it's feathering, it's starting to spread, it's getting hazy. It's not cool. I hate ending on moleskin. It's been quite a funk. Anyway, so there you go. For your consideration, Aloha Mutina Sepia Brown. I know I probably have not described it in a very flattering way. I talked about pond scum, uh, I talked about octopus ink. However, I really, I really think you should give this a try, especially on cheaper papers. It performed uh, very well in water resistance. Um, it actually performed m much better than I expected in general uh, on the absorbent papers. It has a fascinating array of colors. 
Uh, yeah, I quite enjoyed it. If I had money to burn and I didn't need more samples, I would probably think about buying a bottle of this just because the color is so fascinating. Uh, yeah, so there you go for your consideration from the Triple N Network. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching. Bye.